Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Ted Carr here, and today I'm gonna to show you my five favorite exercises that you can do pretty much anywhere. I'm also gonna give you some variations to do if you're in the gym or somewhere with some weights. So uh, for now, let's get into it. All right, so the first exercise is pull-ups. There's uh, multiple types of pull-ups you can do. A lot of people think that these are pull-ups. These are actually chin-ups, and uh, they're all right, but if you wanna build a nice, big, strong back and a nice like V-shape, then you wanna do actual pull-ups. So you wanna grab almost as wide as you can, it actually feels comfortable. If you go too wide, it's uncomfortable. And if you go too narrow, it's uncomfortable. So go a little bit wider than shoulder width if you wanna build that nice, that nice V-shape. And then uh, when you do the pull-up, rather than having your feet behind you like that, uh, which creates like an arc in your back, you wanna keep, try to keep your feet either directly beneath you or keep your feet slightly in front of you like this. And that's gonna allow you to engage your core rather than breaking your core like that. So a lot of people do pull-ups like this, and at the top they do something bad, they go like this, or they go like that with their neck. You don't wanna be totally tense with your back and then go like this at the top every time with your neck. So just keep a nice straight body, grab a little bit wider than the shoulders, legs in front of you slightly, and pop up. Chin above the bar, just like that. And then you just wanna go as, many reps as you can and always do about three or four sets and give yourself a good one to two minutes between each set. All right, so the next exercise is bench press. And I said you can do these exercises anywhere because even if you're not at the gym with the bench press, you can do push-ups on the ground. The reason push-ups are so great is because they work your shoulders, they work your chest, and they work your triceps. But if you wanna put on some real size, you don't wanna be doing like, like a thousand reps of push-ups like you probably can, then you wanna get on the bench press load up the weight and uh, do some proper reps. So the weight is non-existent right now, it's just the bar, but I'm gonna show you proper technique to let you know how to do bench, and so when you wanna add weight, you can go right ahead and do that. So you wanna get yourself in a good position on the, on the actual bench with a nice arc back. So you actually wanna be able to, you wanna come to the side here and film this. You wanna have your butt on the bench, but you wanna create a nice gap between, if you can see that, Possibly see the gap right there, right? You want to hold that gap. That'll allow you to be a lot stronger in the bench position. Now, once it's re once you're ready to unlock the uh, uh, your heels, really should like legally be flat on the floor. But I don't really care about being legal with my benches. I just want to build a big, strong upper body. So I allow my heels to come up. Now, once you're ready to grab the bar, you want to make sure that your fingers are evenly spaced. A lot of people just grab the bar wherever, but there are lines on the actual bar to let you know where to grab. So make sure your fingers are evenly spaced and uh, or your hands are evenly spaced and it's gonna differ. Like you might wanna go a little wide on bench, you might wanna grab wide out here, or maybe you wanna go a little bit more narrow. The more narrow you go, the more tricep you're gonna use. The more wide you go, the more uh, chest you're gonna use. I like to go somewhere right in the middle and uh, we pop off like this, we're up. And then see how my arms are right now? This is as high as I ever wanna come up. So I go down, and when I come up, I don't lock out here. You don't want to lock out every time. So you come down and up and just stop right there. A big thing I used to, a big error I used to make was I'd go down and then I'd come up like that. You never want to do that, especially when there's a lot of weight on the bar. It can really mess up your, uh, your tendons and ligaments. So just stay engaged. Keep the arms slightly bent at the top. All the hard work is from here to here anyway. From here to here, you're not missing out anything. You can do reps like this all day, so you're doing nothing. You only want to pop the top when you're about to rack it like that. Alright, so here's what a set would look like. Go down, make sure to touch the chest every time as well. Touch the chest. The bar should actually physically make contact with the chest just below the pec. So right where your, uh, I guess your abs meet your, abs meet your uh, chest. Just like the sternum area right there. All right, so that's bench press 101. I like to do three to four sets of bench with a good three to four minute rest in between. And my, uh, my rep range on bench is usually anywhere from five to 12 reps. Cool. All right, so the next exercise is gonna work your obliques, the sides of your abs. So what you wanna do is get in push up position and all you gotta do is bring your knee to your tricep or your elbow. So it makes contact, just like that. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm just going back and forth. 
as I'm doing this, what's being worked doesn't look like it doesn't look that hard at all. But this right here is being worked really, really well. Bam! If you, put, if you were to put your hand right here, you'd feel the muscles contracting really, really well. Now, a lot of people have an issue making contact. They just can't reach. They get to here and they're stuck. And I see people doing reps like this. But you've got to make contact. You have to make that impact, that final. From here to here is where the magic happens. From here to here, nothing's happening. So from here to here, nothing. And then boom, that's the magic right there. In fact, you can even do a whole workout just like, just like that. Because this is where the magic happens. So right there, boom, I feel it so much. It's like tensing up big time right there. So if you can't reach, the fix is to simply bring your hands closer. Just like that. Now you can really reach. If you can't reach still, bring your hands closer. And make sure you make contact, all right? So that is the best oblique exercise I know of. Now you do one side for 10 reps and you do the other side for 10 reps, or you just go back and forth, one side, one side, one side, one side. That's what this would look like. Go down here, and you go right, left, right, left, right, left. And afterwards, the obliques are really, really gonna feel it. So that's my favorite core exercise. The next exercise is squats. And before you get on the bar and do some heavyweight squats, you wanna master body weight squats. Uh, I'll link a video in the description to teach you how to do perfect body weight squats. But assuming that you already know how to do body weight squats, you're gonna hop onto the bar here and build some real leg size and strength. Now the first thing you wanna do when walking up to the bar is make sure that these are at the right height. The way to make sure that they're at the right height is that when you finally come under to take the bar off, you shouldn't be doing like a big rep to get them off. You just pop up and it's off, just like that. I see a lot of people, they, they start with this, uh, the bar and it's just too low, so that when they have to get under this, you know, really low, and then when they stand up, they have to do like a full rep to get up. The other issue is the opposite, when it's too high, and then people have to go on the tippy toes just to get off. You definitely don't want to go on your tippy toes to get the bar off, especially when there's weight on there, because then when you, try and un when you try and put the bar back on the rack, you can, uh, you can miss it and you can fall. So keep that in mind, make sure these are at absolute perfect height. And uh, it's always best to have a, a spotter when you're doing squats or bench press, but Today, we're just um, keeping it easy, just doing the bar, and I'll show you how it's done. So, just like the bench, you wanna make sure your hands are perfect width apart. Once you know that they're evenly spaced, perfect width apart, by judging where your fingers are on, on these lines here on the bar, then uh, you're gonna go under the bar, just like that, pop it up, and now here's the magic. You take two steps back and two steps only. One, two. Pivot the foot in if you need to, make any adjustments, and then you're gonna go down. Just 90 degrees, back up. When you're done, you keep your head straight and you walk forward until you hit the, bar, uh, hit the rack and you come down. So I'll show you that one more time. So when you're putting the bar back, you just keep your head looking forward and you go boom, boom, hit the bar, done. Rather than, I see a lot of people make this issue, when they're putting the, the bar away, what they do is they they come and then they look to see if they're in. Why do you need to look to see if you're in if you can just feel it and then put it down? So much safer to just walk forward till you make impact with the frame, all right? Now let me show you that walk back one more time because it's super, super important. You're gonna put weights on here, it's gonna get heavy. You wanna make sure you keep this trick in mind. You're unracking the bar. Up, one step, two step, pivot the foot in. That's it, and then you go down. All right, you're done, you look forward, hit, in. That's it, super, super safe squatting tip right there. It saves you from uh, going out and taking all these steps as well, wasting all this energy that you could be using when you actually go down to do the squat. The fifth exercise I wanna talk about today is running. I'm not gonna show you running here, but running is by far one of my absolute favorite exercises because it just gets me out the door, gets me breathing in a lot of clean, fresh air, and it provides some balance for my fitness approach. So I used to just do triathlon, right? I just did cardio, 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 swim, bike, and run all day, every day. And then I got into strength training, and I pretty much neglected all cardio altogether. I just did pure weights. But now I love to incorporate some running into my workouts, whether that's running on a treadmill at the gym as a warm-up or cool-down, or if it's just going out running trails. I absolutely love running trails. I love running road as well. I love all types of running. 
which is why I even love running on the treadmill. But uh, yeah, if you want to get outside, just go for a nice run. I highly, highly recommend it. Good for the spirit, good for the soul, good for your heart, and uh, good for your muscles. Helps provide a lot of uh, variation with your training. Helps keep things fresh. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And also, if you want to learn how to make gains as a vegan, whether it's with your running or whether it's with your strength training or any other sort of fitness, if you want to learn how to get fitter as a vegan, you're definitely going to want to come to the Canada Fruit Festival happening August 9th to the 12th. If you don't have your full access pass yet, you can click the link in the description to get your Canada Fruit Fest full access pass. All right, hope to see you there and in the next video. Peace out. Ever been to a fruit festival before? Because now's your chance to make it happen. Now is your chance to have an experience of a lifetime. Prepare yourself for four jam-packed days filled with education, motivation, inspiration, new friends, live music, high quality fresh foods, hands-on workshops, and so much more. Want to come to a fruit festival? The 2019 Canada Fruit Fest could be the ideal experience you've been dreaming of. The magic unfolds August 9th through the 12th in the beautiful Okanagan Valley of Kelowna, BC. The 2019 Canada Fruit Fest, Canada's number one plant-based health and wellness festival of the summer. Visit www.canadafruitfest.ca to learn more.